I'm back at work at the shoe. Today is Ohio State spring game and I'm working. I'm so excited. I'll show you around. Hi guys, it's Sunday. I didn't do much recording yesterday, just um, at the game, the game. It's a spring football game, if you're not aware what that is. It is, and I'm assuming all teams do it, but it's where the Buckeye offense and defense, they split them up into two teams. So it's the Buckeyes playing the Buckeyes and it's a scrimmage situation but there's like real officials there the coaches are on the field they kind of can mess with the time clock um they can redo plays if they want to stop and redo something it's you know it's a training exercise but it also gets some of the newer kids used to having typically a stadium full of fans we're running errands i'll tell you so in a in a season not affected by COVID in April they um, schedule the game they sell tickets for like five dollars and the all the money they raise for these five dollar tickets goes to a charity I'm not sure what charity it is maybe it's something different every year I don't pay attention to that portion so in years past pre-COVID they would fill the stadium. 100,000 fans would come to watch this fake game. I mean, it's, not, it's real, the football players are real, but um, it's not like against another team. And the coaches are on the field and there's officials out there and the officials are doing their thing and the coaches are, you know, let's stop play, let's reevaluate, why didn't this work, why did it? But. It's all, like I said, it's, it's also an opportunity for the players to get used to playing in a full stadium with fans screaming and yelling. The band is playing all the typical, all the typical things that would happen at a normal game takes place during this game, but they're out there trying to do their thing. So it's, it's fun and it's a great opportunity to bring kids to the game. It typically goes faster, so the quarters are 10 minutes. They don't really stop the clock for anything too much. So it it goes fast. So it's a great opportunity, like I said, to bring the kids out, families. It's pretty quick. It's pretty tame. Um, now this year, or last year, they didn't have the game. Or if they did have the game, there was no fans. Or I didn't work it. This year, they of the 100,000 or so that the stadium holds, they, they allowed 20,000. And the majority of those 20,000 spectators were frontline workers, medical providers, things like that. And then they had students, so they sold tickets or allotted so many tickets for students. And then like, I think 4,000 only went on to the general site Ticketmaster site to purchase the tickets and like I said they're only five dollars or some five dollars but because we've been a year without fools are out there selling their tickets scalping tickets to a fake game ridiculous and <coughs> so my job is I walk around I'm basically like a hall monitor if we're gonna be truthful about it <clears throat> making sure that when you're in already in the building, now you're still following the rules. You know, you couldn't get in without a mask. Your mask had to be pulled up over your face. Everybody was agreeing to that when they came in the door or got their tickets. But then all of a sudden, it you know, well, I don't need to wear my mask. Oh, oh, you do. You do. And it was the same offenders all day long. I mean, it was if I had to tell 20 people to pull up their mask, it was 20 people that I told 15 different times. 
to pull up their mask. You know, cover your face. This is not just for your protection, it's for the other people there. You know, I'm fully vaccinated as of Tuesday, but it's okay. So when you're seeing this on Monday, tomorrow, I will be considered fully vaccinated. I was very comfortable being there. I kept my mask on the whole day. I'm not fighting with people. Anyway, so we had that situation going on. That was fun. I walked almost seven miles working yesterday, just getting to the stadium, which I was able to park right outside. So that wasn't even an indicator, which typically I would walk eight miles. So that makes sense because I park about a mile away during the, the full season when there's fans and whatnot at the game. And then, um, so I walked six point something miles, almost seven miles, came home, took care of the animals. I had to feed the cats, feed the dog. Then I'm dog sitting Miss Luna. Her mom will be here today to pick her up. And I just kind of relaxed the rest of the day. So what am I doing today? Right now I'm headed to Target. I need cat food, kitty litter. Um, I need a couple things for my backpacking trip. I have all my normal food items. I'm looking for Lily's chocolate as a treat at the end of the night. And um, I can have the Lily's. It's made with stevia, so it's no sugar added. And I happen to know that here at this Target, they sell the little uh, miniature peanut butter chocolate cups in the Lily's brand and they're pack individually packaged and I think you get six in a bag so that'll be perfect to get a bag of those to split up for a couple night you know I won't take the whole bag but I figure two per night while we're out there so it's a good little pick me up when you're at the end of the night and you're like eh, I'm tired and then uh, I need to go to the Dollar Tree so I can go home and film a video. And I was going to take London for a walk today. We'll see if it warms up. It's only 47 right now. So it's a little chilly for me. It's my muscles. I mean, it, it'll be fine when I warm up, but I did walk seven miles yesterday. But, so I think we'll do that. So I definitely have to go to the Dollar Tree after here and pick up couple things I need to clean my house it's a disaster I have backpacking gear all over my living room clothes laid out all the things because that's how that's how we roll when I'm packing for backpacking I've got to get everything out and um, yeah ready to go so let's go in Target and see what we can buy okay we came out of Target and the one thing I went did not plan on buying what I did was a set of these eyeglass cleaners. I'll take one out and show ya. So, clearly I wear glasses, sunglasses, morning to night. I don't take them off. And in the summertime, especially with sunblock, there is nothing that drives me more crazy than getting smeary on my eyes and can't clean off my glasses. And so I'm looking through blur. So these little things have a small little carabiner on them. I might find a better solution for that a little bottle like hello a little tiny bottle of cleaner that's empty oh empty two mil so I have glass cleaner at home I'll just fill this up and it has a little pump if you want to spray them and then you have your glass cleaner but it tucks its way up in here you just tuck it up in here oops keeps it clean basically and the point for me is that it keeps it away from my sunblock fingers and it just hangs on your little bag like that and then when you need to clean your glasses you pull it out and it it's attached on an elastic on the inside so you pull it out little lemon take it off clean your glasses get all the little smudgies off and then shove it back up in there I oh, that great um, you get a three pack for five dollars 
I went with the summer one. So you get lemons, watermelon, and kiwi. And then, like I said, I have um, cleaner at home. Glass cleaner that I can just pour in here with a little funnel. If I'm going anywhere that I feel like I'm going to need that. So that was what I purchased just for summer entertainment purposes, really, to keep with me, especially if we... If I ever get to go to the beach again, I mean, I don't know that answer, but I'm hopeful. All right, let's go to the Dollar Tree. We're getting coffee because I deserve it. Ugh. Today's been busy, guys. I've been cleaning my house. It's time. I got to put Easter away, make dinner. I put ribs in the crock pot and then... Um, did my errands this morning and then that rotten dog rotten dog I took her for a walk let her go potty took her into the house shut the door let her off her leash did all that then I walk outside and I have my leg blocking her girl jumps through my leg and bolts now she's a known runner and she does not listen to me period when she's out living her best free life which whatever if we want to i'll take you to the dog park if that's what you want but she also has no fear of my street and i'm just terrified she's gonna get run over i literally chased her around a 10 row of condos three times fine and i mean i say chase but there's no chasing i follow her because she's not stopping and she's not listening finally one of my neighbor's family was over cooking out and i was like can you stop her so what they did is they walked towards her and then she got scared because now you know oh now aunt lordy i need you because these strange boys are following me mm. then she squatted down let me pick her up and i took her home rotten dog so she's at home and um with alex who those two have been spatting all day long They've been sassy, all these pets. Wellington, my old guy, he's laying out in a bush because he said, I don't want any part of those two. <sighs> Let me just tell you. And I've done something to my shoulder. I don't know what. It's the shoulder that I had surgery on. Right now, it feels like it did right after surgery when I was doing physical therapy. And that's not good, guys. I, uh, I don't know. I was at the outlet mall the other day getting new shoes for my backpacking trip and I walked out and I had a paper bag with a pair of shoes I mean nothing weighs anything I lifted my arm to get in the car and I felt something like pop snap crackle pop I don't know and now I've had this horrible pain and I'm terrified to go back to my doctor the surgeon because I don't know I'm scared I don't I don't want to go through surgery again so right now we're doing the ice ibuprofen Tylenol combo. Hopefully I just tweaked it or tendon pull or something. I don't know. So I decided today since I've been doing my housework and I've been getting things done that I needed to also um, go get my water filter that I need for backpacking and I also need to get a can of fuel I'll show you I probably won't bring you in this store is REI and they're gonna be packed on it's for a Sunday if they're not I will bring you but I mean I'll show you at the store but I need to get it's for twofold really what it does, it filters water, but it's real lightweight. And I'll show you when I get it home. But you have this rubber bladder, for lack of a term. And then the filter screws in. Now, I can just drink the water. And it will filter it. So I can collect water from streams, lakes, rivers, moving bodies of water. Nothing stagnant. And it will kill bacteria and germs and stuff. So it makes it drinkable. So there's that. Um, for backpacking, I will use it so I don't have to carry 100 gallons of water with me. 
because water's heavy. A liter weighs two pounds, just for reference. But also, when I'm out kayaking in the summer, it'll be nice to have a portable water source as well. And when I'm traveling, you know, I can always, like abroad, if I go, when I go to Ireland, I can filter. I don't know why I would need to, but. So I, get, I need a water filter for outdoor. And then the fuel is what I use to cook when we're backpacking. I have two cans. One is pretty big. I don't want to bring that. Plus, I don't feel like there's a lot of fuel in it. The other, I don't know how much fuel is in it. And that's the thing. And, and I've had it for several years. So I just need to get a fresh can to bring. And then I can determine at that point how many cooks I have. And what I'll do with the other two cans that I have, I'll just take them with me backpack or um, kayaking and, you know, I'm out on the river, maybe I'll make coffee. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to throw them away, but I also don't want to take them into the woods and run out of fuel when I need to cook my coffee in the morning and dinner at night. So they have to have boiling water. And that's how you make it. So, I need a can of fuel and I also need a um, water filter. I can order it on Amazon, but I also want to go into the store. So, there's that, right? Um, I bought at Target couple of the metal carabiners that are going to be lighter than the heavy plastic ones I have. Plus, I think they'll be more sturdy and again it's something I can use backpack or kayaking as well they're good to attach things to my kayak i.e. my keys that's always the you know you don't want your keys to go sinking to the bottom of the lake river or body of water <laughs> so some people put them on like fl uh, floating and I can do that. I can just put a single car key on the floating um, key ring that boaters use and stuff so that if it falls over, and mostly in this situation is if my kayak tips over. So I could probably wear them on a lanyard or put them in a floating something just to keep, you know, make sure they're safe. That's the one thing I always wor worry is a strong word but I always consider. Now, if I'm out kayaking and we're camping, then I just don't have my keys with me. But if I'm, you know, driving down the road or driving to a river or a lake to drop my kayak in and paddle around for a while, then I will have to have my keys with me because I have to lock my car. What I really need is to get a dry sack. Um to put like a towel and stuff like that in inside the kayak with me. I also bring a, like a little tiny cooler with water, but that's where the filter comes in handy too. I can just scoop it in the lake and filter the water. And it does filter out, this filter will filter out bacteria and stuff. So that's good, right? So I'm calming down because I, my heart rate was going and I was like, I'm not doing this with you because she just doesn't listen. Oh, she'll stop and look at me and make sure I sh I'm seeing her. But she was running free. I was like, girl. Oh, I got stuff in the car to take in too. My back end. I'm also kind of low-key looking for a new bag chair. This one here has seen better days, so we'll see. I'm not going to Costco, although this is where Costco is. I'm going right over there to REI. All right, I will show you what I bought when I come back out of the store. That's a fun store. If you like outdoors, guys, REI is the place to go, but it's expensive. But I did pick up some toilet paper. I can roll my own, but for a dollar, it's done and this is the equivalent of 300 inches or 75 sheets that'll be enough for two days three days I grabbed this is what my can of fuel looks like so it's not too too heavy 
and this has um hmm. I don't know how many ounces are in here I'll have to find it but it's here and there is a gauge on the side that will tell you like how many boils but that's if you're using a oh, three and a half 3.53 ounces is the net weight of the fuel that's in there it'll be plenty for a couple days and then like I said when I'm out camping or you know if I go kayaking early in the morning I want to make coffee and I could just bring it along it's super easy and then I grabbed some of this raw element certified natural sunscreen lip sunscreen my lips burn and I have 15 but I'm more concerned when I'm out boating and things that I'm gonna need um, more like a 30 or something so got the lid off I don't know how good it is but we will see mm. Mm. it doesn't have any taste to it but it's a broad spectrum SPF 30 water resistant for 80 minutes it's outdoor protection and that's very important when I'm out on my boat on my kayaking at the lake at the river at the ocean at the baseball game watching my little cousin play so yeah I grabbed those three things it was a, a ride out here to spend nine dollars but they were out of stock on my water filter that I would like to get so I'll have to go online at I'll go home and order it on Amazon and get it delivered. A lot of people are going outdoors these days. In the store, they have a backpack section, which if Jen and I decide that we're going to go backpacking in Virginia, I will probably need to invest in a bigger backpack. The one that I have is 45 liters. Um... I will need to get a new tent for myself because if it's chilly, both of us sharing one tent is not a big deal. However, if it's warm, we're not going to want to be on top of one another. So a new tent and a backpack because I won't have room. I mean, I could maybe make it work. We'll see. I will get the back, the tent first and see if I can get everything. Because honestly, I wouldn't need to bring, if it's warm, when we go, I won't need to bring fleece lined leggings and a long sleeve shirt, thicker shirt to sleep in. That saves room in my pack. And I have bottom straps that I could literally strap it. So I may not need a new backpack, we'll see. But, oh, so they sell backpacking backpacks at this store, REI, obviously, and <laughs> there's a sign that says backpack fitting line start here and just as like if you've never backpacked before backpacks are not cheap if you get you know a decent one which if you're going any distance you want one that fits you they're several hundred dollars so yeah I saw lots of people in there stocking up on the same stuff I was getting some fuel and getting I could have got the fuel at Walmart um, but I was looking for a specific water filter that gets really good reviews. There are two water filters that backpackers who do like long distance backpacking typically use. One is the Sawyer Squeeze, very lightweight. And the other one is the Ketadyne Be Free. Again, lightweight. Um, I would watch several review videos and I think the Ketadyne will be what's better for me. And so that's what I wanted, but they were out. Well, they did have a three liter version but that's just way too big for me I don't need something that large I don't have any intentions of carrying that much water that's more if you're gonna go long stretches where there's just not water available depending where you backpack or where you hike you know some like so there's certain trails the Appalachian Trail has a lot of water sources so you don't ever need to carry more than one or two liters at a time because you're gonna always come up on places to top off your water. Now the Pacific Coast Trail, which is on the east, west coast of the United States, and you go through the deserts of California up into the mountains, not a lot of water sources there. 
are not a lot of consistent water sources there and so you have to carry more water so then you would want something larger but i don't plan on doing that if i do i can always invest in a larger bladder not my bladder bladder to hold the water aren't you guys glad you asked <laughs> anyway so i got the fuel that was imperative because i gotta like i said i have to have that i will go home and um put that with my pack packing my pack packing stuff with my backpacking stuff i will put the toilet paper it'll i will take it out of this plastic you can leave it in here for camping but i'll take it out and just carry that it's just a roll of toilet paper without the cardboard and like i said i could have rolled up my own but not worth the effort when it's a buck 50 for toilet paper and you do have to pack it now toilet paper in your depending on your park that you go to so you have to read the rules so i think in zaleski where we're going you if you have to go to the bathroom because everybody has to go um the state park that i'm going through has what's called a privy they're out usually they're biodegradable toilets it's a toilet seat over a hole basically in that situation you use your regular toilet paper you toss it in life is good now if you have to dig a hole let's say to go number two and there's no privy around and you need to go to the bathroom you dig a hole away from water source away from the trail like there's rules some parks say you can bury the toilet paper that you utilize in the hole cover it up and move about your business some parks say that you need to carry that toilet paper out with you same thing goes for sanitary supplies for women if you're having your period when you're out there you know you have to carry all that stuff out with you they do and there are no trash cans on the road you bring a big ziploc baggie and you put all your trash your food scraps anything goes in that so i believe at this park i'll have to double check but i'm pretty sure i can bury the toilet paper if i use toilet paper if i'm just going to tinkle then i i won't dig a hole so i'll just throw it in my trash bag um which is always it, it's always in your best interest to potty near the privy but whatever the trail that i'm going on i think is 11 or 15 mile loop there's camp spots all along the way so even if there's a spot we're not camping at there should be water source there should be bathroom situation of some sort porta potty whatever and then there's campsites to pitch our tents so I will bring you along please don't worry but I needed a little break from the terrible pets all three of them okay two of them Alex and Luna and I wanted to I've not been to that REI before so I, I thought it was fun it's just very very pricey like there's definitely definitely could get the same things cheaper at Walmart even but it just depends what you're doing you know a water filter is a water filter. That's not something I want to skimp on. My sleeping bag, my sleeping bag is synthetic and it's a comfort rating at probably 40 degrees. So it definitely is not something that I want to take out if it's going to get cold. And I have been out when it was below freezing and I froze to death. It was so cold. Um, so if I decide... You know, these are things I would want to upgrade. The, one of the sleeping bags I'm looking at is a down. The benefit is they're super light, they're very warm, and they stuff down real small. The negatives are they're very expensive, and if they get wet, they're basically useless until you get them to a dryer. And not even like, I guess you can dry them out and fluff them up, but in order to really fluff them up, you need to go something you need to get to a dryer with some balls some tennis balls some dryer balls so you gotta treat them you know treat them well and they'll treat you well Ooh, that's brother jay but um if we decide to do for any backpacking 
on the fringe months, fall, early spring, you got to have warmth at night. You're laying on the ground with a pad under you, but you're still laying on the ground. So you really need to have warmth. So I'm looking at a down quilt, actually. It's just a, like a sleeping mummy bag, but there's my body would lay on the mat and not on them down. Um, a mat. So like for me, the priority is shelter. A decent tent that doesn't weigh 10 pounds a sleep system mat sleeping bag I already have a pillow and uh, my pack those are the three you know big three they call it they're the most expensive and they can make or break your comfort and in this world what you spend is in direct correlation to how comfortable you're gonna be um, so yeah, but definitely it's nothing I have to buy. I have the minimum. I'm not going in the cold months. I think I'm watching. It should be in the high 30s, low 40s with my pad, my sleeping bag, and the clothes I'm going to wear to sleep in, I will be fine. I haven't even have a hat to sleep in. Not worried about that. My backpack is fine. It fits decent. Um, and we're not going for a super long time. And we have a tent to share. So, we're good. If we decide that we're going to do more of this, then I start looking at upgrading things one at a time. And off-season is the time to do it. Also, I'm going to look at some resale sites. You know, somebody bought <coughs> a down sleeping bag and they don't like it, or a down quilt and they don't like it, and they'll sell it for less than what they paid new. I don't have a problem with that. Oh, I just spilled coffee on me. Same thing with a tent. Although I'm looking at some pretty reasonably priced tents on Amazon that get really good reviews that are like under $200. So that's good. So we'll see. I would like to, you know, the summertime go to Georgia or Virginia and do a couple hikes, like over a couple night, like four or five nights do one trail up and back and then drive two hours and do this loop is kind of what I'm looking at but we'll see I'm not making any oh wait I don't want to get over here I'm not making any plans right now until um I get through the next week you know my we haven't been backpacking in several years so yeah all right I think I've talked enough I am headed home. I will show you. Who's honking? I will show you my ribs. They should be done when I get home. And my coleslaw that I made. All right. I'll talk to you. All right, guys. Sorry, vegetarians. But I have my ribs. I took them out of the oven. I'm sorry. I took them out of the crock pot. So what I did is I got a rack of St. Louis style ribs, turned them over, removed the silver skin. I sliced them off into two rib sections. I just put some barbecue seasonings on it and cooked them on high for about five hours. So they're super tender right now. So all I'm gonna do is put some sugar-free barbecue sauce on them and throw them under the broiler just to give them that grilled taste because I'm not getting the grill out. I don't have a smoker, Oop. so this is how I do it. And they turn out really well. Oh, the broiler's ready. So I'm just slathering this side with barbecue sauce. And then I'll stick them under the broiler and let them just char up a little bit. There is not real sugar. I think this is made with Splenda, but it'll still char up a little bit. Crisp up for us. And then I made some homemade coleslaw to have with this. Because I just feel like that's where we're at right now in this time of the year. And then I'll have some cold, you know, regular barbecue sauce to eat with them. Especially when I heat them up in the microwave. So I'll show you when they come out of the broiler. All right, this is how I'm going to keep that rotten dog from running on me again. So watch. Come up here. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. There she is. Yeah. And Alex also went out. Nope, nope, you can't go out. Say hi. So this way, when I want to come and go, I'll just step over the gate. And Miss Happy Pants isn't going to run on me. Oh, goodness gravy, guys. What we do for pets. <gasps> We've got dinner. Got coleslaw that I made. And my ribs came out of the oven. I will taste it for you. They're so good. I do this all the time. The coleslaw, I took just cabbage. And I made a dressing with mayonnaise. Um, apple cider vinegar. Some garlic, salt and pepper. I put in this seasoning that I got at Aldi. It's called umami. It's so good. There's like a mushroom base to it. I threw some of that on there and then some of my sweetener. But look how tender that is. Mmm. So good. Guys, I'm telling you, if you've never cooked your ribs in the crock pot, you just throw them in there. I just put dry seasoning. I know some people put like soda on theirs, like a Dr. Pepper or whatever. You can do that. But honestly, I just cut them up in a couple ribs. I stack them. I sprinkle dry barbecue rub on them and I turn it on. If it's going to be an all day situation, I turn it on low. Today, I put, didn't put them on until 11. Put it on high. Tender. Melt in your mouth. So good. And then I just shove them under the broiler for a few minutes with some barbecue sauce and you don't even have to do that but I just wanted barbecue and then the coleslaw just cabbage mmm so good all right everybody that is it I think I'm gonna wrap up the day so I can edit this video and get it out for you tomorrow thank you so much for watching have a good day and I will talk to you later bye